Welcome to the slightly delayed Rugby League verdict. We've just about reached the end of the Super League season. This weekend, we will find out who will be crowned champions in the women's competition. And in the men's, we will know who is off to Old Trafford. But before we discuss the women's grand final, I'd like to welcome Catalan winger Tom Johnston, who joins myself and John Wilkin. Tom, hello. Thank you so much for your time today ahead of such a big game. Uh, I want to, well, I suppose before we get into that game, we actually have some breaking news for you. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but just moments ago on Sky Sports News, we revealed that you, Tom Johnston, are on the uh, shortlist for the Steve Prescott NBA Man of Steel. How about that? What? Uh, really? Uh, <laughs> um, no, I had no idea. Um, wow, that's that's incredible. Um, amazing. So you, you join Bevan French and Jack Wellsby. I mean, can you try and, I suppose, sum up the season and, and tell us why you think you're on that short list? Um, I probably can't tell you why, why I think I'm on it, but um, it's been an incredible year, you know. I've loved every minute um, of being here and playing with this team. I'm surrounded by special players, you know, what always make me look good. So, yeah, maybe, maybe that's the reason. Well, you're very modest. John Wilkin, I'm sure you can tell us why Tom's name is on that coveted list. Yeah, well, Tom obviously is known for his try scoring. So what he's done this year is deliver in that regard. He's scored a bucket full of tries in, in a very prolific Catalan team. But it, it, it's not that that... I think is the reason that Tom's nominated. He, he does all the other bits of the game well that people might not understand is he carries the ball strongly out of yardage. His work rate's incredibly high. Defensively, he's been really tidy. But I think Tom's story is one that's quite inspiring. It, it's not a story that was a straight line. It's had adversity in there. It's had horrific number of injuries in there. And so t for me to finally see Tom Johnston at the peak of his powers, in a team that's challenging for silverware, um, it, it is an incredible story of human perseverance and, and toughing it out when you can easily throw the towel in in life. And I suppose for Tom, my question is, just with all that you've been through, all of that adversity, how much has that fueled this season's performance from you? Yeah, it's it's been massive. Um, you know, I've, I don't want to, you know, sound like a... Like I've had, you know, a lot of troubles, but uh, the off seasons, I don't usually take them. I try and, you know, recover from injuries and come back for the next year to, to, to play again. So to actually string a full season of games together, it's it, it feels amazing. You know, I've, I've I've tried working really hard with a lot of good people behind the scenes and for it to to come together and click. It's it's something that I've, I've been working for, you know, for the past four or five years, really. Tom, Tom, I want to move on to, I suppose, this Friday in Perpignan, your Catalan Dragons take on the reigning champions, St Helens, in that first semi-final. I'm interested, is success for your team this year winning at Old Trafford? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, from day one, that's what the goal, the object, you know, the objective's been for the team. Um, we've said all along this year that we've, we've come to win it and that's something what, Personally, I, I came to Catalans to win win the competition. So, for us, anything other than winning the grand final is is not good enough. So, Tom, what, what is it going to take then to not only get to Old Trafford but to be lifting that trophy for the first time for for the Catalan Dragons? I think we just we just need to play play the style that you know we've we've done this year. But we need to we need to do it well. We need to be on the top of our game. You know, we've got the. The reigning champions come in trying to do five in a row and, you know, they're going to be tough and they're not going to want to want to give it up. So we just need to play the best we can and do what we've we've practised all year and just try and execute really well. And, you know, I think we've got more than a chance to do that. So, John, that's Friday on Saturday in the other semi. It's Wigan up against Hull KR. That's going to be another blockbuster. Yeah, without doubt, Wigan's form uh, since they got beat by Hull KR in the Challenge Cup semi-final has, has been incredible there and beaten since that point. And, and if you look at Wigan's team, well, they've got probably two of the most exciting pe players in Jay Field and Bevan French. They move the ball around an awful lot. So their edges, their, their, their strike is on their edges. 
um, the, a real threat. But they come up against Hull KR. And now, sport throws stories at you every now and again. And, and, and you get compelled to follow those stories. And the story of Hull KR's development has been captivating for me for a number of reasons. One is, on the field, look, they've delivered. Willie Peters, the new head coach, who's one of the most beautiful, humble men that you'll ever meet, got them to fourth in the league. For a club of that standing is an incredible result. But it's not that. It's not that that I love about Hull KR. And there's other, Wigan are a great club too, but Hull KR off the field have got it so right. There's people in the office and the people who work at that club who are completely invested. And I had the privilege of going down there and filming some bits and people like Sue Thompson, Alan Fellows, the people behind the scenes, the people who get no credit whatsoever, completely invested in where this club's going. And that's, uh, you know, that's special. Yeah, well said, John. Well, Tom, we will let you go because uh, you've got a massive game to prepare for. A huge congratulations for being a contender for this year's Man of Steel. That's unreal news. Thank you very much, Jenna. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Cheers, John. You're welcome. Well, it is time now uh, to say hello to our next guest, who is lead centre, Caitlin Beavers. Caitlin, hello. Thanks for your time this afternoon. There is just four sleeps to go until the big one against York in York. How are you? And how's the team? I'm good, thank you. Yeah, we're, we're ready and raring to go. Training this week has been, well, for the last two weeks, has been absolutely phenomenal. So we're just edging it, we're biting at the bit now to get going. Yeah, it sounds like you are ready, uh, which is a good thing because York, as we know, are unbeaten in Super League this year. In fact, the only team uh, to take a point off the Valkyrie was, in fact, your side, the Leeds Rhinos. What is it about York that makes them so good? I think they've just got a lot of strength in depth. Their, their forwards are probably the biggest pack in the league and, and they've got a, a lot of experience within that. So I think that's, that's a good platform for them to start with. Well, John, you were at the semis and we saw two brilliant contests, but I know you were particularly impressed with what uh, Leeds managed to do in Golden Point. Yeah, just lead to find ways to win games. Much like the men's team, you know, from the golden era of Sinfield and, and co., what, what I think Leeds have fostered is just an ability to win tight games and find out how to win games that they maybe shouldn't win. And I thought they did that against St. Helens, an incredible performance, uh, obviously a golden point win. Um, and, and rightly, they find the, the, the way to the grand final where they face York. And now York, although they've been great, you know, they haven't won that competition before. So I know as a player, like going into that game now, if you're a York player, that's in the back of your mind. And, and that could that could be poisonous for the mentality of the York team and that could play into Caitlin and Leeds' hands. Yeah, well, we know Lindsay Anfield will be desperate uh, to get her hands on that first trophy, as you say. But, Caitlin, let me ask you about your coach, Lois Forsell, because this year she's spoken about the challenges uh, that have met this team. I mean, you lost key players to the NRLW. It really was a season of growth and development. So to have the opportunity to win the title two years in a row, I mean, what does it say about your team? Yeah, I think that we've done really well to say that, like you say, we've had so much diversity with with the women, uh, some players moving to the NRLW at the very beginning of the season, alongside a few injuries at the very start. And I think we've we've really got um, to the point where we can compete um, very well in games like this. And like you said, for the last two years, we've, we've managed to make it to the grand final. And I think that's definitely... Um, it just shows how, how committed we are and no matter the diversity that we face at the beginning of the season, we always come together and I think that shows the environment that Leeds is about. It's a great, a great group of girls and um, once, we, once we start to settle, we'll come out in form. Well, Caitlin Beavers, we really appreciate your time on the Rugby League Verdict and we wish you all the very best for what is to come on Sunday. Of course, that game live for you on Sky Sports Mix on Sunday. We cannot wait. John Wilkin, it is always a pleasure to have you join me.